The first question that we should answer is, why multicast? Why does multicast exist? What problem does it really solve? And how should we design our networks with multicast in mind? What is the scenario where we would think, hmm, multicast may be a better use case in our enterprise than something else? That's what this nugget is all about. It's just to set up the principle of what multicast does at the end of the day. Let's get going talking about where multicast fits in the big picture of our network. Now, before we jump into this topic about what multicast does, we need to introduce you to the lab that I'm going to be using throughout this particular skill and the next skill. We're using the same enterprise lab that I've used throughout previous nuggets in this playlist, and I'm focused in on just the bottom half, everything below this black line here. And what I've done is I've deployed OSPF throughout the environment. This is actually really important to have an underlay in an IGP operating sharing routes, but that's going to be a reason or a topic that we talk about in a later nugget, particularly when we get to reverse path forwarding. Just know that for now, I already have IP addresses assigned on all of these devices and routes are being shared throughout the environment. Beyond that, I am performing summarization on these distribution switches as advertisements leave the area and go into the core backbone area. So we summarize these prefixes that you see listed right here on the screen as they're advertised out of the area. We do have end-to-end -end reachability. So this desktop host right here can ping this desktop host right here if that's what we want to do. Now, to go a little bit forward and talk about how multicast would work within this environment is a pretty important topic to talk about. First, recall what unicast routing does. This is kind of a big thing. A unicast route is all about one IP address or one device or one node communicating to another direct IP address or node. In this case, if this host wants to ping this host, it would form a unicast packet, which would be routed throughout this network, something like this, until it reaches its direct endpoint. This is a one-to-one -one communication. Now, what about the broadcast? Broadcasts are typically used on Ethernet segments. They don't really go beyond a router. So desktop 25 here could send a broadcast frame or packet into the switch and it would be sent out all other switch ports that are communicating on the same VLAN. In this case, I don't have trunks going up towards the distribution. These are layer three routes. So a broadcast frame from desktop 25 would be restricted to the VLAN that's on that access switch. But the point of the broadcast is it is a one to all, but it is contained within that layer two ethernet segment. What happens though, if desktop 25 wants to stream data to multiple resources throughout the entire enterprise? Pretend for a moment that desktop 25 is starting a video conference and it wants to be the source. Just like I have this camera right here in front of me, pretend for a moment that I want to stream this video feed right now throughout the entire enterprise. That's the idea that we have here. So we have one source going to many destinations. And beyond that, we don't want to restrict it to just our VLAN. We want it to go throughout the enterprise to however many resources want to receive my video stream. This is the point of multicast. This is multicast in action. So maybe we have a host here on switch 11, and maybe we have a couple hosts here on switch 12, and maybe we have no hosts on switch 13. The idea is that desktop 25 here could send its stream into the network while these hosts over here could make a request that they want to receive that stream. And then all of our network devices work together in order to coordinate how a source can send a stream of data into the network and how our recipients that want it can actually retrieve it. There are many different flavors or styles or ways that we could efficiently deploy this throughout the network because multicast has been around since the 80s and it's evolved a lot. So there are a bunch of different design techniques that we're going to be talking about over the next couple skills. It's just really important to set up the fundamentals of multicast first. So that sets up the fundamentals of multicast. There's a little bit more that we need to talk about before we move on. Recall from our IPv4 addressing scheme that the class D block of addresses is reserved for multicast addresses. And this was specifically the 224.x.x.x through the 239.x.x.x block of addresses. This is reserved for multicast address. And we've seen some of these multicast addresses already, haven't we? In OSPF, there's 224.0.0.5 
or 6. In EIGRP, there's 224.0.0.10. Another popular multicast address is 224.0.0.2, which is the all routers multicast address. Now here's the kicker. Think for a moment about the actual behavior about these multicast addresses that we've just laid out right here. If we enable EIGRP, for instance, on switch 7 and switch 6, they start communicating multicast packets destined for 224.0.0.10. So switch seven sends a hello packet out this way and switch six here sends a hello packet out this way. But notice something interesting. Switch six upon receiving a hello packet will not forward that packet towards the other switches. That's because this is actually by design. There is an RFC out there that specifies the 224.x.x.x address space is reserved for multicast addresses, but only on the Ethernet segment that they're sent on. In other words, 224.x.x.x addresses should not be forwarded by routers. The idea being that we could send a multicast packet from one device into a switch that maybe has multiple devices on it, and all of those devices on that Ethernet segment could hear it, but it wouldn't be forwarded beyond that. That makes perfect sense when you think about OSPF or EIGRP neighbor adjacency formation. We only want a neighbor adjacency to be formed on the interface that we enable it on, right? We wouldn't want EIGRP to forward an EIGRP hello packet to the next neighbor, and then we accidentally have neighbor formations coming to life. That would be bad. But in our original scenario, what were we talking about? We were talking about desktop 25 sending a stream in of multicast traffic, and then these routers or switches that are performing routing capabilities are forwarding that multicast packet throughout the network. And that's why we call this multicast routing. This is a big deal. We have to now have a multicast routing table, just like we have a unicast routing table. That way we know when a multicast packet comes in, we know where the next hop should be. We know exactly where to forward that multicast packet. So you should know that when you see these 224 addresses, typically they are not forwarded from one address to the next. Now they can be, but they're typically not. That's what the RFC states. However, if you saw a 231.x.x.x address, now is when we would start looking into our multicast routing table and seeing where all traffic can be sent or forwarded, who is sending traffic to that address, and who is expecting to receive traffic from that address. That is the idea with multicast routing. The key word there is that routing. This is the thing that throws people for a loop the first time they actually deploy a multicast network. So this sets up the point of multicast routing. Through the next couple nuggets, we're going to talk about how it actually works within an enterprise network. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.